Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about giving your business a name. Choosing the right business name is a big deal, but don't let it overwhelm you. Hopefully, if you followed along and you've done some of the steps up until this point, you should already have a good idea for your company name. The research that you've done on your competition and then also narrowing down your niche should also have helped to give you a few ideas already. So let's just go over here are a, a few guidelines to help you come up with a good name for your business. Your business name ideally should be easy. It should be easy to spell, easy to say, easy to remember. It should be short. It should the shorter the better actually. Think Nike or Netflix or Apple, very short names. Ideally, it relates to your business. If possible, you can use the words that are found in your industry. Ideally, also, you're going to have benefits right there in the title. So use the words that invoke what your services will do. And another one, this isn't as necessary, but if possible, make it positive. Use uplifting imagery or create a sense of happiness. And what you're going to do now is... With that in mind, get a pen and paper or Evernote, as I like to use, and jot down as many as many names that come to mind. At this point, don't think about the competition or if someone else might have the name. Just write it all out. It's important just to do a brain dump right onto your paper. So once you've got a pretty good list going, and now go through it and narrow it down. And this is this time to be really be ruthless. Cut it down to your top ten. Once you've got your list of your top 10, now is the time to get online. You can do a search for each of the names that come that you have. So what comes up? Take a look at what comes up. If you have a name that maybe looks a little bit scandalous and some of the results that, that are brought up are uh, less than wholesome, let's say, you might want to avoid that for a business name. Um, often the names that you thought were great might are also another key, key thing to think about is that the thing the names that you thought were great might already be taken by another business or organization. So keep going until you find the one that you like and that's not in use by anybody else. Also, once you've weeded down that list of names a bit, it's time to go to a domain registrar like GoDaddy. Ideally, GoDaddy, you don't have to use GoDaddy, but just any domain registrar. Ideally, you want to get the .com extension. It's not always available, especially these days when it seems everything is taken. But if you can, it's still better. Also, you want to use a site like noem.com. And I'll put these in the notes. Noem.com to check the availability of your name across the other platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and so forth. What it does, it's really cool. You can enter your ideal name, and it's going to check to see if those are available. And of course, the big ones, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, those are for sure what you want to lock down. Ideally, LinkedIn for your bit, your company page, and Pinterest, uh, Instagram even if possible. And the final check that you'll want to do is to make sure that somebody else doesn't own the trademark. And you can do a quick search online at USPTO.gov. And again, I'll put those in the notes. Okay, now once you have narrowed down your names to the top three, this is the time to go to some of your key friends and your family to help you decide. It will be interesting for you to see the reaction. In particular, pay attention to see if it's hard for them to pronounce the business name or if they're confused by the name and so on. If there's anything that's unclear, you, you want to rethink the name. So really take some time with this step because your business name will be a big, big part of your overall brand. And with that, that's it for naming your business. Let's get into thinking about what your business tagline might be.